How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the You Know Adam Same podcast, where you get to know a little bit more about people, passions, and all things business. Today, I am joined by Miss Georgia Southern University, Miss yeah. Sarah Deloach. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're going to kind of like just jump right into it. What does one need to do to become Miss Georgia Southern University? <laughs> well, there's a lot that goes into it. And now the Miss Georgia Southern University pageant is part of the Miss America organization. So okay. So there's a few things that you have to do in every Miss America pageant. That's a 10-minute interview. There used to be swimsuit that's been taken out now and replaced with a social impact statement. So in addition to that 10-minute interview, after you walk in your gown, you're going to give essentially an elevator pitch on okay. what your platform is. And I can explain what a platform is a little bit better in, in just a few minutes. But then you also have a minute and a half talent routine, which is pretty intense, but it's a lot of fun. And then your evening gown. And, okay. And that's the gist of it. So, I mean, there's a lot more that goes into it than that, but you know, whenever someone wants to know a little bit more about pageants, first you have to have to explain what do you do, you know, what are the phases of competition that you have to compete in. So you say that the organization's actually under yes the uh, Miss USA, mm -hmm. and so what it what is like I guess what is the pageant. I guess, hierarchy of things. Okay. I have no idea. So like, <laughs> yeah, let's talk, talk to me about okay. that. Okay, so pageants tend to be totally foreign to a lot of people. I mean, they're very popular in the South, but it can still be very confusing. So you have some pageants that are standalone. You just win that pageant and then you're done. And then you have a lot that are in a system. It's called some sort of system pageant. Miss America is one of those. Miss America and Miss USA are actually separate systems, which a lot of people don't know. They think that they're the same thing. And that goes back to years ago, there was kind of a controversy on the swimsuit phase of competition. Mm -hmm. Miss America tended to be a little more conservative as far as what type of suits they wanted the ladies to wear. Miss USA was a little more on the liberal side and they split at some point. Okay. So they're actually different. It's really interesting. So as far as Miss America goes, typically you win a local preliminary pageant. If you win that, you go on to the state level and you would compete at the Miss Georgia competition, which... This year got moved back to next June. Uh -huh. So that's that's an interesting conversation in and of itself. And then you would go on to win Miss America. Okay. Now, in systems like Miss USA, Miss USA moves on to Miss Universe. So okay. that's part of the Miss Universe circuit. There's, so there's two different routes to go. There's two different routes to go, yes. And then there's other systems that are totally different than that, that it's very similar thing. It's from a local to state local to state to a national organization. That's kind of how the hierarchy goes. But again, there's so many different system girls can compete in, and it really just depends on what's important to them. Some are very much so focused on the talent portion. Some okay. are more focused on the interview portion. Some are like the girl next door. Some want more of a model, you know? So it really just depends on how you feel you best represent that particular system and which one you want to compete in. But Usually the top notch is going to be your title for your country. And in some cases, like Miss, U Miss USA, you can go on to Miss Universe. Wow. Yeah. And, and so are, is there any crossover between the two? I know there they're looking. There's not. There's not. There's so not. you have to choose one yes. and then just run with it. For the most part, yes. Some systems may allow you to compete in others. But for the Miss America organization, I know, for example, whenever I was going to win a local title, I would sit down with the board because usually there's a group of people that are going to prepare you then for the state title. And at that point, they're going to sit you down. You're going to have a contract. So I literally have had a contract to sign that said, I can't change the color of my hair. Wow. Which sounds intense, but it's really from a perspective of the board saying, hey, we are going to take you and prepare you this whole year. So there's certain things we don't want you to do. You obviously, we want you to be responsible on social media. Mm. Don't want you to change your looks too much because if we're pumping a bunch of money into headshots, we don't want you to look different here than you do in the interview. Sure. But that sort of thing. Sure. But one thing that's typically in this contract is you cannot compete in, in any other system pageants. They okay. don't want to put so much effort into you for this system for you to jump over into another system because both take a lot of effort. Girls that tend to compete in a system pageant, that's all they do. So sometimes people ask me how many pageants I've won, and I don't have the number on the top of my head, but it's a lot less than you may think having competed for 13 years, mm -hmm. because by the time I was 15 or 16, I was competing in the Miss America organization, and once I won a title, that was it. I prepared for Miss Georgia, and that was my life. Wow. You're preparing for this pageant all year long. So, so you start uh, preparing to for these for these pageants at a very early age. Yes. When did you start competing? Yes, I started competing when I was ten years old. Wow. And you've 
there's a teen, a, a teenager system as well for the Miss America organization that starts at 13. So whenever I was 10, I started competing in local pageants. I'm from Claxton, Georgia. So I don't know if you're familiar. We have a Rattlesnake and Wildlife Festival. Sure. I do know that one. Yep. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So my first pageant was the Little Miss Rattlesnake and Wildlife Pageant. Oh, nice. Had, uh, yeah, a lot of fun, right? <laughs> had no idea what existed as far as systems pageant go, system pageants went. But once I knew they existed, I was ready to go. Like wow. I, that's what I wanted to be involved in. It was a challenge to me. So I started competing as soon as I was able to when I was 13. And it, it took me several years to reach the caliber that I needed to go to Miss George's Outstanding Teen. But I started competing in system pageants whenever I was 13. And when you it's say, been a long road. and you when you say caliber, like what exactly are you talking about in in yeah. terms of the the skills that you develop? It, it's very rigorous, especially in the Miss America organization because they focus so much on interview. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you have to be a spokesperson right? Especially for your state or for your country or even for your local title that you may have. So for example, an interview in just a local pageant, like there's another festival in Glenville that I won that title, um, the Miss Georgia Sweet Onion pageant, probably one of my favorite titles. But the okay. main thing you do after that is you go to the festival and that's kind of your only your only responsibilities for the year for the most part. So that was a great interview, but it was only five minutes and it was very focused just on me and my interests. Now, whenever you go to a Miss America organization interview, it's a little bit different. They want to know you, but they don't only want to know about you, but they want to know your opinions on the world, current mm. events, political things, not as much when you're a teen, but you do start to get into some more controversial topics. And they just want to know that you're a citizen that is invested in your country, that you're invested in your community. So there's just so many more questions and conversations that you have in those interviews that is focused on the big picture, mm -hmm. something so much more outside of yourself. So to be able to have that kind of conversation with strangers and to be confident enough in yourself that you know what you believe about those topics and that you're actually invested in the community is just a completely different level. And when you're 13, you're probably not invested in those things a whole lot, you know? So it, it took a lot of work to get there, but it also helped me grow as a person interview in this system is what has helped me grow as a person probably first and foremost besides the mentors that helped me get there just being pushed to learn more about yourself it, it's just helped me grow tremendously so it, i hope that kind of answers your question it does yeah. it, it sounds like there's a lot more that goes into there a is. pageant than i guess most people see right so there like is. on the surface you know we see you know the the, the amazing gowns you know the, oh, the, yeah. the the beautiful people on stage but it sounds like at the core of it, it's really more about like developing, I guess, women into, I guess, model citizens, right? Absolutely. And, and, and doing something more for the community. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there sounds like there's a lot of different parts. What do you think, uh, what other things do you kind of like involve yourself in? Mm -hmm. So something that most system pageants require on some level is a platform. Mm -hmm. So that is just some sort of issue that you're passionate about or an organization you might want to partner with. And that's kind of what you end up involving yourself with. There's always appearances like festivals, parades, things with younger children that you want to get involved with. But every girl needs to choose a platform. And mine was mentoring. It mm. actually, it changed and developed a lot when I was a teenager. But then whenever I started competing in the Miss Division, so the three years that I went to Miss Georgia as a Miss contestant, it was mentoring. So my platform was called A Heart for Mentoring, Helping Others Realize their full potential. Mm -hmm. And that came from a place of myself having so many mentors, specifically through pageants in a lot of areas of life, but specifically through that avenue of pageantry, where I was not very confident whenever I was a young child. And everybody has their own story. But like I said before, that interview process, just the work to get to Miss Georgia and the, the caliber and the, the difficulty level that I needed to be on, it, again, it forced me to learn who I was and be more confident in myself as well. And you see that in so many young girls. They just lack the confidence to do whatever it is that they're capable of. And everyone needs a mentor. I think everyone needs someone in their life to show them that you can do this or give them the tools to be better. And that's just what I became passionate about. So some things, for example, that I would do in my community, there was one year where I spoke to every third, fourth and fifth grade girl at my local elementary school. Wow. So I set this up with set this up with the school and I had different days where I would go and I kind of had the same conversation with each class, but it was, what is confidence? How do you have confidence? What are some things that might be 
hindering your confidence mm-hmm. and and how can I change your mind on that and then uh, I'm a dual STEM major at Georgia Southern so whenever I added my second STEM major I did the same thing but in more of a STEM avenue because we lack so many women in STEM and you can do lots of things with your platform so some girls who partner with an actual organization for example if you partner with the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals which is the national platform for Miss America you might specifically work with CMNH events but then mentoring is a little bit more abstract. So I always sought out sort of my own appearances, but it was typically always in a one-on-one or a small group setting where I could somehow mentor to these girls. And it's something that I did in my daily life anyway. I've taught dance for the last five and a half years wow. and have absolutely loved it. And and that's something where just outside of pageants, my natural hobbies tend to gravitate towards mentoring situations Mm -hmm. so it's something i was passionate about daily anyway and then i just sought out more opportunities to do that in my community because as you know whenever you have some sort of name in the community whatever it may be but especially as a title holder in the south where pageants are so prevalent it it gives you a new opportunity to say hello my name is sarah deloach i'm miss georgia southern university or whatever my title was at the time it it gives me more of a door it Mm -hmm. opens an extra door to be able to do what i love Absolutely. Let's uh, take it back to kind of like your journey. Mm -hmm. And you speak a lot about mentorship. Yeah. Who do you think has been the most impactful mentor that you've had? That's a very difficult question. And I I hate to say multiple, but there really have been so many people. And that's everything, everyone from, I had a youth pastor that passed away whenever I was younger or, Mm. or early high school. That was a huge mentor to me in my spiritual life. He could always tell whenever something was bothering me and would never hesitate to take me aside and just talk through it and figure out what it was that I needed. I had so many dance teachers that invested in me as well as pageant board members. Obviously my parents, I mean, my my parents have invested so much time with me with this whole journey. I can't tell you how many times my mom and I would drive two, three hours away for a coaching session and come back. You know, we had so much bonding time and then you meet so many amazing people because you have to have coaches, you have to have interview coaches, you have to have people who know what they're doing to be able to help you get to the next level in the pageant world. And there's so many people that I met that just became so invested in my journey. One of them is Scott Marchbanks, who owns Frills by Scott here okay. in Statesboro. He was a, a great, has and still is a great mentor to me, as well as dance teachers over the years. So when they say it takes a village, it, it truly does. What, what makes a good mentor? I think as someone who sees the potential in you, first of all, and someone who has a heart for it. You know, different people have passions for different things. And it takes a very special person to have, first of all, that heart and that passion for mentoring. And also that sees the potential in you that you don't see. I think some of my best mentors have seen parts of themselves in me and have acknowledged that they can help me in some way or, you know, acknowledge that they've gone down the same road and that they have a story that can help. And Mm -hmm. I think that those are probably my favorite partnerships as well. Whenever I see a young girl, especially in pageants and in coaching girls for pageants, when I see someone who lacks the confidence and just cannot see how amazing that they are, it, it reminds me of me whenever I was in middle school. Very nice. So I think it's the ability to obviously, first of all, have a passion for it, but the ability to see how you can use your negative situations and your hurts or whatever it is from your past for a positive way now in this moment. And you've taken this uh, mm-hmm. mentorship platform and started building on top of yeah. that. So what are you currently doing with that? So currently, I'm, again, I'm mentoring in my everyday life, particularly as a dance teacher. But what I've done for years just on the side and am trying to do more now is pageant coaching. Okay. And again, like you said, pageants have so much more than meets the eye. Mm-hmm. And it seems so superficial at first. But whenever you get down to it, girls who compete in pageants have the opportunity to grow so much and it helped me to the point that I want to be able to do that for other girls. Mm-hmm. I want to always be involved in pageant just because I love them so much. But to be able to have that one-on-one conversation with a girl continuously, you know, they might have a pageant a month from now and I might meet with them weekly for, for you know, a month to get to know them and to see exactly what it is they need and help them become more confident and then see them years down the road doing things I would have never imagined that they would be doing from the first time that we met is amazing. So mm-hmm. that that's kind of what I continue to do is continuing to coach, continuing to help girls with pageants, dance, 
uh, eventually want to be in a classroom in a college setting. Okay. So it, it really is just my as, passion. as a teacher. As a teacher. You, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, a professor, if yes. you will. And yeah. what specific um, uh, what specific uh, knowledge would you be imparting on them? As far as like classes that setting. you're teaching for, for as a professor, what type of pr professor are you going okay. to be? Okay, still figuring that out. Yeah. Okay. Um, so my two degrees that I have and I'm currently working on, I have my mathematics degree, and I'm finishing up my engineering degree this fall. So okay. One of those two. We're trying to figure out which program is going to fit best for me and which one's going to be doable. But uh, either mechanical engineering or mathematics, and a lot of people don't like math. But I love math and I love to show people why it's important. Mm -hmm. It kind of goes back to that whole mentorship. There's people that need to get excited about math. Not everyone's going to enjoy it, but I have something that I'm passionate about that I feel I can share with others. You know, mm -hmm. what is it that makes math interesting? What is it that makes it exciting? How can I show students the pieces that they're missing? You know, how can I bring it to life for them? That's something that really excites me. And even just helping students with tutoring over the last couple of years. I've had several that I've helped continuously that have needed help with calculus, for example. It's kind of that first class, it's really difficult. And I've just, I've really enjoyed it. Very nice. Uh, you know, there might be some people in uh, our, our listeners yeah. that struggle with, I guess, self-confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that is existing very deeply rooted in today's society, especially with, you know, the amount of social media that we consume. Absolutely. Uh, we're on Instagram. We see all these perfect people. You know, every every single picture they put out is perfect. Uh, and they and and it drives a lot of people into, I guess, this this state of not having a lot of self-confidence. For sure. What would you say to those people? To, to try and bring them out of that and, and give them a little bit more confidence. Yeah. There's a lot of things that I tell girls overall, but several things that have stuck out to me that actually former Miss Georgias have said to me and to other girls that have competed in Miss Georgia, first of all, stay in your own lane. Mm. The other people around you, it, it doesn't matter what they're doing. Everyone has their own walk in life. And it's so easy to compare yourself to others. I think we all do it at some point. I mean, it happens to me daily. And it's just at, whenever you're at the point that you're so down on yourself, you have to realize, stay in your own lane. You know, mm -hmm. everyone has their own their own path. And life is not linear. Life, there's a math term here. You know, I, I want things to be in a straight line. and I want them to be concrete. And they're not. And sure. that's just how life is. So first of all, stay in your own lane. And very similarly to that, comparison is the thief of joy. It comparison just is, is the, the thief, thief of, of joy. joy. Yeah. And when you're comparing yourself to everybody else, you're not truly going to be happy. But it happens. It happens all the time, especially for girls. I mean, we're just kind of wired in a way where we want to make people happy. You know, we're nurturers. Typically, we are for the most part, females are nurturers. They want everyone to be happy. They want to love other people. And it's like you, you want to be liked, right? And, and that's just kind of a natural trait of most females. And I think that's what makes it so difficult for so many girls, especially young girls in this day and age. And it's going to happen. But at some point, you just have to build your self-confidence in whatever way that may be. For me, it was pageants. And it was just proving to myself that I could do something hard, mm -hmm. that I could take a task or take a goal, and I could work towards it for years, but still reach it and become a better person at it. You know, it just takes that in person to, take someone to invest in their hobby, mm -hmm. or take someone to invest in whatever it may be that can show them that they can do it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's so simple, but when you can prove to yourself that you are capable, it makes it so much easier. But at the end of the day, that confidence still has to come from a deeper place and knowing that you're loved, you're valued, regardless of what you can do, regardless of what accolades and successes you have. And that's when it comes down to just stay in your own lane. You're making me want to do a pageant. <laughs> We, we can handle that. Is that we, what it we, is? We can do it. I we already have it. a coach lined up, guys. For sure. We, we can handle that. I can <laughs> show just you how kidding. to walk right now. Very nice. Yeah. So let's uh, roll it back to kind of sure. like, I guess, when, when you were younger. Um, you know, you, you started off uh, at, at the pageant in Claxton. Yeah. <laughs> and and um, did you know what sort of impact that was going to have? No. Or was that your parents just saying, hey, we should kind of like go this direction? Yeah. I, something my mom always said is she never wanted me to do a pageant until I was old enough to say that that's what I wanted to do, which is why I never did any competitions whenever I was a lot younger. And honestly, it's so long ago at this point, I can't remember exactly how that conversation went. But there's a lot of different things I did as a young kid. I danced, I played the piano, and mm. I saw girls doing pageants. It was just kind of like, you know, let's let's try it. But once I did it that first time, 
I just wanted to keep doing it. It, it. it was kind of that thing where I wanted to prove that I could do it. And, and I enjoyed it. It was almost like a competition within myself for a while, though. You know, like I was just wanted to go at it and wanted to practice as much as I could just to be better. Mm -hmm. But I think that as I continued, my parents definitely saw more of a confidence instilled in me. And, and sure, it was based on my ability at the time. And that's not where your confidence should come from. But that's where it starts, right? That's where it starts whenever a, a child or a young person can prove to themselves that they can do something. So it was really just kind of on a whim, like, you know, hey, let's try this. But then at the same time, as we continued, especially as I started getting into interview pageants, it was tough, especially mm -hmm. for a shy person that did not want to talk to people. You were and shy really, before? Oh, I, I was very shy. I was very shy. Uh -huh. You wouldn't think it now. But I just was never one to want to talk in front of a lot of people. I love to dance on stage. Like, I love to be on stage. But in more of a one-on-one -on -one setting or with a panel of judges, it was a much different story. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, for you, when you were, after you kind of started, uh, I guess, getting success in that arena, mm -hmm. it started interesting you more. Uh, you started kind of like, you know, understanding what, what the different pieces were. Uh, what was kind of the best memory that you have from you know oh, your, your your the this period, Ugh, th there's there's so many, so many. There really are so many. Probably one of the turning points for me was when I won my high school pageant, mm -hmm. which seems small, but also doesn't seem small. Except that was around the same time that I was starting to compete in local preliminaries. I had tried several different preliminaries to go to Miss George's Outstanding Team. I don't think I placed in a single one of them. Mm. It's like my talent was there. I was a good dancer. I was fine on stage. It was that interview piece that I was really struggling with. But around the same time, I was getting ready for my high school pageant as a freshman and in the youngest person to win my high school pageant at Palmon Christian Academy. So mm -hmm. that was one of those moments that I would say probably was a turning moment. I had started to put in the work for interview and really get better at it. And I saw the fruits of my labor rewarded and was really excited to win in general. I was just going to be happy as the youngest girl in the pageant that year to be in the top 10. Mm -hmm. And I won the whole thing. Nice. And it was, it was just very exciting. It was rewarding, first of all, just because it was my high school pageant. And at the scholarship that I won was named after a lady who's very special to me. She's a pageant coach that has been coaching in Claxton for years. She was my first pageant coach. So it was important anyway. But to see myself being able to take things to the next level was very exciting. Mm -hmm. So let's also, during this same period of time, uh, were there any, I guess, things that were um, on the reverse end of that, like the most challenging moment during yeah. that period of time that, that was so difficult that you thought that you would never be able to come back from? Did it's, you have any of those? It's funny you say that. Two stories to kind of go along with that. In that time period, it's funny you say that because I did have a, a little bit of bullying issues going on at school. Nothing intense. I mean, mm -hmm. it wasn't anything crazy by any means, but I was kind of easy to pick on just because I didn't know how to take a joke. I'm going to be honest. Sure. Freshman Sarah did not know how to take a joke. I took everything to heart, and it, it was just easy to be picked on. Some people took advantage of that. Again, it's it's not like my life was ruined by it, but it was kind of a tough – it was a tough year for me it, 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 in some standpoints. My onstage question was about bullying. Wow. It was – it was very uncanny. And okay. several of my classmates noticed that. They were like, mm, yeah, you know, this kind of came full circle here. So that was, again, a confidence booster because of that that had been going on. But I will say, too, this brings up another point that I think is very important for people in life in general, but especially for girls that are competing in pageants. The last year that I went to Miss Georgia, I know this is a different time period, but it does go along with this, this question. The last year I competed in Miss Georgia – the year before, I was fourth runner-up out of a group of 50 girls, okay. which was very exciting. Mm -hmm. It was one of those things where that last year I was going to win. I mm -hmm. had gone to win every year, but I knew I didn't want to compete that many more years. And I was like, okay, this is it. I'm going for it. So I chose to compete in a pageant that had probably one of the best boards in the state. And it's just one that I had not won yet. And I went from placing top five out of a group of 50 girls to not placing out of a group of seven to nine. It was, it was, that seems something mm. silly to be devastated about, mm -hmm. but when you've worked yourself up and you know that you're good at it. Sure. I mean, and never would I want to be cocky. I try very, very hard to stay humble in everything that I do. But when you know what place, like what placement you deserve, it's very difficult. And 
there were several things that happened that I realized that God had a hand in that. Wow. He knew what I needed. It was not that board. It was the board that I ended up with. And I had a coach tell me afterwards, he said, Sarah, you sounded so nervous on stage. I was like, I was sick. Mm. At interview, I was fine. And then at some point between interview and on stage, I had got some sort of just throat something. I don't really know what it was. And I sounded a lot less confident on stage because I was not able to project my voice. Mm -hmm. And that was so small, but it was like, it was devastating again to go from such a high to such a low whenever I had just placed over those girls at Miss Georgia a few months before. And then after several of those conversations, I realized, you know, I needed to have this experience. Sometimes you need to be knocked down to rock bottom to realize what you need and have a more concrete form of confidence rooted in a different place and just realize that, you know, God's got my back. He knows exactly where I'm supposed to be. And it was it was a very helpful experience because since then it helped me realize that, you know, you can place first one mm-hmm. day and last the next. Mm-hmm. And you may be the same and have the same performance on both days. And when it comes down to it, it was literally that judge's opinion. And never should you allow someone's opinion of yourself to knock you down so hard. I think that's huge. You it, know, it like really you know, for, is for, huge. For, for in, in, in life in general, yes. that, that life lesson learned there was, you know, something that I think that everybody experiences because you can't win every single time. No, you can't. And it's like when you work so hard and you put so much literal blood, sweat and tears, I can't tell you that I hadn't had a million blisters on my feet from tap dancing. Okay. I mean, you know, whenever you work so hard for something and like I said, you've been from a high and gone down to a low, it's like, dang. You know, it just, it really knocks the breath out of you, but it's an important lesson to learn to be able to get back up and say, it's literally someone's opinion. Mm -hmm. Just suck it up and move on. Just an opinion. It's just an opinion. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sarah, I I have a question about your, your talent. So you mentioned uh, earlier that you uh, dance. Yes. And you also play piano. Yes. Uh, What other things do you do? I can walk very well <laughs> in high heels. Very nice. Is that, so I, I I sang in church a lot whenever I was a kid, and I played the piano. I chose to cultivate dance. Whenever you're working so hard for that talent, you just kind of have to pick something and go with it. So I would say my strongest talent, if you think of things like singing and dancing, would be dancing for sure. Okay. But uh, besides that, I mean, let me tell you, I, I do know how to walk in a pair of heels. Nice. That sounds so silly, but uh-huh. like whenever it comes to pageants and modeling, you it, got that down. whenever you do it enough, you can look at a girl on stage and I know exactly what to tell them to tweak whatever they're doing. To which be- is one reason I enjoy modeling coaching so much. Okay. So it's like a system. Like I know exactly what to tell them and it's so fun. But uh, besides that, outside of the whole pageant and dance realm, I love to give tours on campus, so okay. I can walk backwards for okay. three miles on <laughs> campus and know exactly what's on Georgia Southern's campus and where to miss it and what to go around. So that's a, that's a pretty good talent. So, so let's talk about uh, okay. your dancing. Yeah. Um, I guess, did the dancing career, I guess, coincide with pageants and that Absolutely. sort of thing? Okay, so um, with, with dance, I guess, what are your favorite styles? Uh, where do you currently teach? Yes, I okay. do. Cur- I do currently teach tap, jazz, and ballet, but tap is my strong, my strong suit. That's what I chose to begin cultivating even more. Because I didn't grow up in a competition studio; it was a recreational studio, and I knew that if I was going to be competitive, I needed to choose one style, find a teacher, mm-hmm. like for extra lessons on the side, and put my heart and soul into it. And that's what I did. I practiced so many times out in my garage, like at how at my house that the taps on the bottom of my shoes started chipping off. Like I had like five pairs of shoes that have like little chips in them because I had ground them down on so Love much it. on the concrete. Love it. So yeah, tap is definitely my, I would say signature style. That's what I did every single year competing at Miss Georgia was tap dancing mm-hmm. and my favorite style for sure. Yeah. So uh, tell me a little bit more about kind of like the business side of your, your consulting business. How does one kind of like get in touch with you and how sure. do you go about, I guess, falling into like the different, systems and programs that you you have created yeah okay so as far as contacting me literally just message me i am on facebook instagram i give you my phone number i mean not to put out here but you know like i mean people who would text <laughs> me all the time and i it just is it's pretty simple i do have kind of a flat rate that i typically charge it, it's not a whole lot because i have charged an arm or i've been charged an arm and a lay for interview coaching sessions and it was absolutely worth it. But mm-hmm. in a small town, it's like, you know, I want to give you what I can without 
charging you so much. But uh, as, as far as kind of the systems that I've created, I really enjoy working with girls more than once. Like I, 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 I would love to work with anybody anytime, but I really appreciate the opportunities and the relationships when I have a consistent meeting time with a girl because it grows the relationship. And how are you supposed to get to know someone enough to help them present their best selves to the judges if you don't really know who they are. Mm -hmm. So there's several things that I go through with interview. First of all, interview can be scary to a lot of people because of just the sheer amount of unknown questions that could possibly be asked. So what I typically always tell girls is they're only asking about you. Mm -hmm. If you say that, if you realize that an interview is only a conversation about you, it seems a lot less scary. But with that, you have to be prepared and think about every possible question they could possibly ask. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to answer questions about yourself if you don't understand who you are. So that, that's half of the process is just throwing questions at them they might have never just considered. And it could be something as simple as, and this is like a little girl question, but still for like 10 and 11 year olds, they might be asked, literally, what is your favorite color? Nobody knows why their favorite color is blue. It just is, you know, their favorite color just is blue. So it's taking things that you might have never considered. You know, why do you enjoy dancing? Why do you enjoy this? Why do you have this belief that you do? And you have to really dig deeper to understand why you believe what you do. And that's one reason interview is so great for girls. You know, mm -hmm. th that those kind of questions that you have to ask yourself, typically people get that experience in college sure. when your beliefs are challenged. And not that your beliefs are challenged through interview prep, but it's getting to know yourself to the point that you can talk to anyone mm -hmm. at any time about anything and any topic. That is the task. And not only just that, but you have to be able to sell yourself in the, you know, the most innocent way possible. And that makes sense. I mean, you're in a job interview, sure. right? Especially for Miss Georgia. It's like, important. It's very important. You think about this 10 minute interview at Miss Georgia and you have to show the judges that you can handle appearances every day talking to anyone and you have to show that you can promote your platform and the national platform all in 10 minutes. So, I mean, they're asking about yourself. They're asking about all these different things. So not only do you have to realize that they're only asking questions about you, mm -hmm. you have to understand yourself and you have to understand how to strategically answer a question so that they can see as much of you as possible in three, five, 10 minutes, however long this interview is. So especially for younger girls, the interview is going to be five minutes, that's not a lot of time to get to know somebody. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of strategy to it. But at the same time, I so always encourage girls, take what I say with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I have enough experience that I can tell you how to present yourself best to someone else. But if I suggest like a point of view or maybe an answer just as an example that you don't agree with, then don't say it. Like never would I want to promote a girl going into interview and saying something they don't believe. It is always important to 100% be yourself. It's just sometimes you have to be strategic to get across the message that you want to get across. So, you know, at the core there, I actually really like the part about uh, being able to know yourself well yes. enough to be able to answer these questions. Because as these questions come up, it's not so much on the surface, okay, well, I like the color blue, but why? actually why? Why, exactly, you, it, exactly. It, it then like makes sure that you have defined mm -hmm. yourself to be able to answer, okay, why is it really that color that I like? And I think that that's something that, you know, I, I typically have a lot of conversations mm -hmm. with, you know, either people that are want to be entrepreneurs, uh, business people, so forth and so on, even my staff oftentimes. And I all, like one of the, one of the things that, that gets them is really like when I start digging deeper, yep. like it's not just, okay, well, we want to do this event. Okay. Well, what is the purpose? Right. Exactly. Uh, and, and for them to be able to kind of answer that, I think is, is part of, it's a huge part of a life lesson to say the least. It is. Uh, you know, my audience really cares about business. It really cares about passion, which absolutely you have. We um, try. We yeah. Try. <laughs> uh, so if there's anything that you want to kind of like tell them, yeah. feel free to kind of like throw well, that as, out there. As far as businesses go, the only other kind of, part of my business, I guess I would say. It's it's separate, but it is a business in and of itself. There's a company called Beauty Counter that I've been working with for the last two years. And to give an elevator pitch per se on Beauty Counter, there are so many chemicals that go into, it's a cosmetics and skincare. We have men's lines as okay. well. It's a okay. lot of fun. And even if you don't want to purchase from Beauty Counter, this is something that I've increasingly become interested in that it's important for everyone to know. So a little bit of background. 
going back to pageants, swimsuit is a big part of the Miss America organization, or it had been for years. And it's also a big piece in a lot of other pageant systems. And it's not even necessarily the biggest and most important phase of competition of the pageant, but to be healthy, to know how to be healthy consistently Mm -hmm. and to be confident enough in your body in a swimsuit protrudes so much confidence everywhere else. So health is something that you really do learn. You're forced to learn if you don't already have a good basis for it when you're competing. So I naturally became very aware of what I was putting in my body, you know, just being uh, um, aware of your health and fitness. But something that I wasn't very aware of is how healthy your products are or your skincare, or even your cleaning products. And it's amazing how many people I have listened to that have, for example, especially for girls my age, I'm getting married in February, Mm -hmm. and I have a lot of young girls that are my age who are starting to have kids. And the amount of infertility issues, for example, that can be traced back to chemicals in your everyday products, it's staggering. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So Beauty Counter bans 1,800 chemicals from all of their products, which might not mean anything to you until you realize that the United States only bans 30. Mm -hmm. So there's a drastic gap there. And I mean, your skin is your largest organ. Everything that you put on it soaks in within 26 seconds. So if you're putting all of that junk on your skin, it ends up causing a lot of other issues. So that's kind of the basis of beauty counter, but even from just a more healthy, just a health standpoint in general, there's so many companies out there that are promoting that. There's Grove Collaborative, which... I should have a growth collaborative box coming in the mail soon. They have a lot of beauty products, but also cleaning supplies. So doctors tell girls to clean up their cleaning supplies when they have infertility issues or skin issues or acne issues, whatever it may be. So that's kind of another piece of pageants that I've carried with me to now that I think a lot of people can learn from and just being healthy and being aware of everything around you. There's something in there that I want to kind of like touch on that we didn't get to earlier. And I guess it's your stance. I I kind of heard it, but your stance on kind of like the swimsuit, Mm -hmm. I guess, controversy, right? Oh, it's a controversy. It's (laughs) kind of like ripping through the entire organization. Yeah, Um, I think that it's recently, I guess, bring me up to speed. I'm not so familiar with that. It's... It's been a roller coaster ride. Let mm-hmm. me tell you that. My, my one bragging right for the 13 years I've competed is I'm the last overall swimsuit winner for Miss Georgia. Okay. For the Miss Georgia pageant. That's the one thing I'll brag about because I was so excited about it. And I, I've never, again, going back to confidence, I was never super confident in the way that I looked. But whenever I was forced to kind of understand the health a- aspect, it became one of my favorite phases of competition. So to back up just a little bit, there was a huge controversy because – well, first of all, there were some leadership changes. Okay. And that's where a lot of it came from. The swimsuit being taken out was a ripple effect from the national organization down to the local organizations. And I actually dropped out of Miss Georgia one year. The last year that I was really supposed to go before competing in Miss Georgia Southern, I did drop out because I didn't believe, not necessarily in the taking away of swimsuit, but the leadership that was at the top. And they had their own kind of hidden agenda is is the best that I can tell. And there was a lot of things that happened. We won't get too much into the nitty gritty, but they were trying to steer it from being a pageant to just being focused on talent and interview. Mm -hmm. Well, talent and interview is very important, but to be able to walk this, this might sound derogatory. I promise it's not walking in five yards of fabric on a stage in high heels. If you can do that, you can do anything. Mm. Let me tell it just, it just exudes, you have to have so much confidence. Sure. And I've won swimsuit preliminaries in the past, not because I was the most ripped girl on stage. I mean, I always kind of had a soft look because I don't like heavy things and I don't like to lift heavy things. I just don't. I tried to stay healthy, but there were some girls that had abs for days. That was not me by any means, but I was confident. I knew how to walk. I loved being on stage. I just loved performing and just being on stage in that moment. And that confidence is what won it every single time. Mm -hmm. That's what wins swimsuit every single time. You do not have to be the most fit. You do not have to be the skinniest. You do not have to be the most muscular. You have to be confident, Mm -hmm. which is the reason why I always, always, always will be a fan of swimsuit competition. Okay. And I think that that leadership kind of had their own agenda where maybe they weren't the best in swimsuit. And they said that, girls don't compete in Miss America because of swimsuit. Now that's true, but anyone can better themselves with health and fitness. Sure. They might not have the same body, 
that's okay. You don't have to have the same body. The confidence is what's important there. But honestly, what keeps girls from competing most of the time is talent. Mm -hmm. Because anyone can work on interview. Anyone can work on swimsuit. Not everyone has a talent that can be put on stage. Mm -hmm. Everyone has some sort of talent, but they're not all necessarily stage-ready talents. You know, the best softball player in the world or the best athlete in the world, you can't do that in a minute and a half in a half on stage, you know? So it was just, honestly, it was kind of an agenda and a change in leadership thing, and that's where that came from. So a lot of girls that have gone through this change and have maybe jumped ship to a different organization, it's not necessarily just because of swimsuit. It's because of where that decision came from. Mm -hmm. And that's that's been hard over the last couple of years. But uh, do you think it's something that they will eventually bring back or what what is it's hard to say? I hope so. And there's other organizations who still have swimsuit and still have that importance and they really prioritize health as far as that goes. I'm not sure where the Miss America organization is going to go. I would hope it would come back, but we also have so many conversations surrounding body image sure. and the Me Too movement and the sure. feminist movement. We have so many conversations surrounding that that are in so many different levels. I mean, we could have a whole separate podcast episode <laughs> on that. And everyone has their own opinion, but I think there's so much forward thinking that people on one end of the spectrum will never see it come back, mm-hmm. if, if that kind of makes sense. Sure. You know, everyone has their own opinion. Some people think it's totally derogatory if you've actually experienced it. It's not, but there's such strong opinions about it. I don't think it will ever come back to the Miss America organization. And I think that's kind of like the world that we live in it right is. now. You know, we, we have everything that, you know, it's almost like we read a headline. We don't do any sort of research deeper into the into the topic, and we make that decision, and we're like – just up in arms. It's, it's crazy how that's happening right mm-hmm. now, uh, more so than ever before. And, and you know, to have certain, I guess, pageants and, you know, organizations be impacted in that way, I think is very difficult, especially yes. with, with when you see so much value that that mm-hmm. brought. All right. Uh, well, Sarah, thank you so much for coming to the show. Of I've course. had a blast uh, hearing about all your experience, especially in the mentor, mentor side of things. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I, I think it's a great... Um, piece of, I guess, you know, what it is that you do. I I think that, you know, everybody out there needs a mentor. I've had mentors, you've had mentors. Mm -hmm. I think it's an important part. Uh, Just to close close things out, I mean, you know, how do we kind of like reach out to you? Uh, How do people in the audience kind of like get in touch with you if they have any interest in any of the services that you provide? Uh, What do you have kind of like coming up next? Well, I am on Facebook and Instagram. You can follow just my personal account. It's sarah.c.deloach. And all of my, none of my stuff's private. I did that because of pageants. A lot of times they want everything to be public so that different people following what you're doing can see. So I would very easily and very quickly answer a, a message if you wanted to shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram. And if anyone had questions about pageants or would love to have a session, would love to work with anybody. I mean, I, I just enjoy it. It's something that I love. I'm passionate about. And to be able to pass on those tips and tricks and most importantly, help someone just become a better version of themselves is very rewarding and I love it. So just shoot me a message and I'm actually doing a coaching clinic. So with Dancing with the States for Stars, obviously there is a huge fundraising piece. So November 15th and possibly a second date that weekend, depending on how large it gets, I will be doing a coaching clinic at the dance studio I teach at, which is in Glenville, but it's just $50 for the two hours. And it's going to be a little more, I mean, it's going to be in a group setting, but I'll give everyone kind of the base tips and tricks that they may need to start with interviews, start with modeling, whatever it is. So it's just kind of kind of a really good crash course. And then from there, if you wanted to work with me individually, then we can always do individual sessions as well. And wherever you're at, I do a lot of FaceTime. That's honestly for interviews specifically. Of course, you can't do that for modeling, but with how easy it is to just do a quick FaceTime now, and as busy as everyone is, it tends to be so much easier and just better to manipulate with your schedules. So yeah. Even if you're a couple hours away, whatever it may be, you know, message me. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, Sarah, thank you for your time. Of uh, best of luck to you uh, in you. your competition. Thank and then uh, looking forward to everything that you uh, do in the future. Of course. All right. Thanks thank you so much. much. Appreciate it.